Hi. Now in this question, we're told that the acceleration of a particle p moving in a straight line is t squared minus 9t plus 18 meters per second per second, where t is the time in seconds. And there's three parts to this question. The first part is to find the values of t for which the acceleration is zero. In the second part, it is given that when t equals 3, the velocity of p is 9 meters per second. Find the velocity of p when t equals 0. And finally, in part 3, show that the direction of motion of p changes before t equals 1. So if you'd like to uh, have a go at this question, if you haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back when you're done and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, with part one, we're given that the acceleration, which I'll define as a, is equal to t squared then minus 9t plus 18. And we've got to find the values of t then for which that acceleration is zero. So it's just a case of just saying, when a equals 0 and solving the equation. So when a equals 0, we've got, therefore, t squared minus 9t plus 18 will equal 0. Being a quadratic equation, I'm going to try and factorise it. And it does factorise. If it didn't, you could always use the quadratic formula. Um, but it does factorise to t minus 3 and t minus 6, which equals 0. And then we would just put each of these factors equal to 0. We've therefore got t minus 3 would equal 0, or the other factor, t minus 6, would equal 0, leading to t equaling 3, if we add 3 to both sides here, and t equaling 6, if we add 6 to both sides. OK, so nice one there for part one. Now in part two, it says it is given that when t equals 3, the velocity of p is 9 meters per second. Find the velocity of p when t equals 0. Well, to get velocity, velocity is equal to the integral of acceleration with respect to time. And if that's the case, all we've got to do then is just integrate the acceleration with respect to time. So we've got the integral then of our acceleration. That's t squared minus 9t plus 18. We've got three terms here. So if we're integrating them all, just put them in a bracket there. Integrating them with respect to t. And in the usual way, if we integrate the first term, we just add 1 to the power. That's up to t cubed, and divide by the new power. So you get t cubed over 3, or a third t cubed. Next, add 1 to the power of t, so that's minus 9 t squared, and divide by the new power, so that'd be 2. And when you have a constant, that's just going to be the constant, 18 in this case, multiplied by t. And don't forget, you get a constant of integration. I'm going to call it plus c. Now we're going to have to work out what c is, and that's why we've got this condition here, that when t equals 3, the velocity of p is 9 meters per second. So we can say that when t equals 3, we know that v equals 9. And so what I'm going to do is substitute these values, we'll just put sub, sub these values into this equation here, which I'm going to call 1. So we'll just say sub in 1. All right? And if we do that, we've got for v, it's going to be 9. So therefore, 9 equals t cubed over 3. So it's going to be 3 cubed over 3 minus 9t squared over 2. So it's going to be 9 times 3 squared divided by 2 plus 18t, so that'd be plus 18 times 3, and then plus the constant of integration, c. And if we work this out, we've got 9 here equals, and if you work this part out here, 
it comes to 22.5. So you've got 22.5 plus the constant of integration c. So if I take 22.5 from both sides, I get 9 minus 22.5 is minus 13.5. So it follows then that c equals minus 13.5. So if I substitute this back into equation 1, we've got therefore v equals t cubed over 3 minus 9 t squared over 2 plus 18t plus the constant of integration c, which is now minus 13.5. And all I've got to do now is just substitute when t equals 0 into this equation. So if we just say that when t equals 0, then v is going to equal, well, this term is going to be 0, 0 here, 0 here. So v is going to equal minus 13.5, 13.5 meters per second. And that's quite interesting because that's telling us it's moving in the opposite sense then to what we would have as the positive sense. So if we took the positive sense to be to the right, this is now moving to the left. Well, this is good because in part 3 it says show that the direction of motion of P changes before T equals 1. So if I was to substitute now t equals 1 into our formula here for v. Let's see what we get. So when t equals 1, what does v equal? Well, we've therefore got v equals 1 cubed over 3, so it's going to be a third. And then we've got minus 9 times 1 squared over 2. 1 squared is 1, so it's just got minus 9 over 2. And then plus 18 times 1, so it's just going to be plus 18. And then we've got minus 13.5. And if you work this out, what you get is one third. One third of a meter per second. A positive value. So you can see that it has changed direction before t equals 1. Because when t equals 0, it was going in the negative sense. And then when t equals 1, it's going in the positive sense. So it's clearly changed direction. So just to summarize, I'm going to say, therefore, direction, OK, direction has changed. And I know that because it's gone from a negative value to a positive value. So I hope it's given you some idea now how to do that if it caused you any problems. All right?